Hey everyone, I am H.G. Roberts, author of On Monsters and Phantoms, and today I want to read you an excerpt from this book to give you an idea of where this story will take you. This is a book that I hope will change the way you see yourself and the world around you. If you're still haunted by memories from your turbulent and traumatic past, if you're still mired in depression or anxiety or excessive fear or even addiction like I was, then I hope you'll have the courage to explore this book and try to make new meaning uh, from your experiences and your life. Connect the dots, as I like to say. Uh, you can learn more about this book and me at <clears throat> on monstersandphantoms.com. There's a link to the website below in the description for you. So to set this passage up just a little bit, um, I think it'll speak for itself, but uh, just to give you a little context, I was six years old, uh, my father was out of the picture, and I was being pursued by a monster. So I'm at the age where I need these. This used to be a New York City cab, Mr. Burke said to me as he drove us to his house in an old black cavernous checker after school. During the drive, no AC, windows down, exhaust and heat filling the car, afternoon sun kicking up wavy mirages on the road in front of us, Mr. Burke did all of the talking. He spoke quickly and energetically about drawing and painting while I slumped in the passenger seat, my seatbelt slicing me across the waist. He was leaning forward as if throwing his weight toward the front of the seat would make the car go faster. He was gripping and re-gripping the steering wheel as he sped through the streets, his forehead and cheeks sweating. Move it, Ace, he barked. Come on, Grandma. His tone made me squirm in my seat. It was different than his classroom voice. I decided I didn't like him very much. There was an edge to him that made me feel unsteady, on guard, like I shouldn't have been in the car with him, like this was all wrong somehow. The abrupt skid into the driveway made my head jerk forward. His brown house, a few streets over from mine, had white trim, a crack and oil stains in the cement driveway, sagging gutters, a scrappy lawn, dirty windows, and a sago palm in the front yard with dead fronds hanging low. The concrete walk to his front door felt miles long, extended not by distance but by apprehension. I remembered my mother's word, behave. The first thing that hit me when he opened the front door was the bug spray smell coming from inside. His wicker furniture was sparse. The tan carpet, which buckled in places, had large stains. A lonely chandelier with missing bulbs hung, hung tilted over a card table in the dining room. A stereo was propped up on cinder blocks, and there were cobwebs in the corners where the vaulted ceiling met the walls. There wasn't much art. A couple of posters, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, were tacked crookedly with pushpins on the dining room wall. Light struggled to pass through the place. It didn't seem welcome. He kept all the vertical blinds closed. It was not the type of house I pictured my teacher living in. It, too, felt very wrong. He pulled me inside, locked the door, and asked softly, Do you remember your mother telling you to do what I tell you, that you need to behave? He wiped his sweating brow and took a deep breath to steady himself. His sweat, his breathing, the blinds now made me scared. Yes? Good. Take off your clothes. I stood frozen. My heart beat faster. I don't need to take a bath. It's, it's not a bath night. Tomorrow's my bath night. My mommy gives me a bath. You're not going to take a bath. I've got something better in mind. Take off your clothes. Are you a doctor? He looked at the floor, closed his eyes, closed his eyes and pushed his glasses up on his nose. Do not disobey me. Do you understand? I am in charge, and if you do what I ask, I promise that everything will be okay. Fun, even. I didn't move. I had to pee, but I was holding it. He grabbed me by the arm and squeezed tightly, grinding my bicep. I tried to pull away, but couldn't. Take off your clothes. He let go of my arm slowly and took his own clothes off. Behave. I was naked before him now, feeling the unwelcomed caress of air against my skin. Exposed, vulnerable, afraid, confused. 
I covered my genitals. This strange naked man wasn't supposed to see them. I didn't walk around my own house or school naked. He was pimply, pinkish white and soft, with patches of hair sprouting unevenly here and there. He started by lifting my arms and caressing my fingers. His eyes were wide and greedy as they swept over me. I held my arms up, feeling, fearing what he would do to me if I didn't. He stroked my forearms and fingers lightly, breathing in happily like I was a pleasant fragrance. After some time, he forced my arms around him in a hug, pressing his body firmly against mine. His body hairs pricked me like brushing up against tangles of seaweed in the ocean. I hated that feeling. My face, puckered and turned to one side, was smashed into his sweaty belly. I tried not to breathe. I arced my body. Together, we looked like a capital D. See, he said, stroking my head, like I promised, it will all be fine. Now, I want you to kneel down in front of me. I don't know if what I read just resonated with you or how you received it, um, but if it did, I really encourage you to get a copy of the book and read the rest. I promise you that you're not alone. I promise you that there are others just like you, just like I was just like you. And I promise you that you don't have to quiver in some dark corner, scared and alone anymore. If my book isn't for you, uh, or my story isn't for you, that's fine. There are plenty of other people out there in the world who can give good counsel and good advice and help you. I encourage you to seek them out because I know that facing down your own monsters and phantoms is a daunting process, but I'm here to help. So you can go to my website and contact me, reach out to me directly. You can also leave a comment for this video below. I'll see that and we can strike up a conversation. But either way, um, I just hope that you would not suffer in silence anymore. So um, before you go, uh, take a look at my introductory video and uh, get more acquainted with this work and who I am and, and what I'm all about. And uh, we can continue the conversation. And uh, I also encourage you to spend a little bit of time at my YouTube channel. It's My Resilience Story. That's the YouTube channel. And uh, you'll hear other stories from people just like you and me. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe, of course. And uh, I'll continue to share posts and excerpts just like the one I read today uh, for you. Okay. And again, I'm H.G. Roberts. Thank you so much.